Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech, looking at part two of the Magic vs. Hex lawsuit. If you have not seen the first video, you should definitely head over and check it out, otherwise you're going to be a little bit lost. Uh, there have been several new documents filed in the lawsuit, but three of those are of particular importance. Uh, first, is Hex and Cryptozoic both gave basically notices to appear and they disclosed their corporate uh, structure. If you look at these, you'll see that the ownership of Cryptozoic and Hex are extremely similar. The main owners of Cryptozoic are also the main owners, or at least several of the main owners of Hex. There are some additional parties who own Hex, uh, but Cryptozoic and Hex appear to be proceeding together in challenging this lawsuit. It is basically uh, one group of two companies fighting against the lawsuit. Uh, this is only really going to matter later if there ends up being a ruling against uh, one or the other party. Uh, how much damage is done to Hex will be determined and whether or not any of that damage would also bleed over into assets of Cryptozoic um, is really what's very important here. Um, but we're not going to deal with that issue yet in the lawsuit. It's way too early to determine that. The other one, though, is extremely important. The defendants have made a motion to dismiss or in the alternative ask for a more definite statement. I mentioned in the last video that Wizards kind of threw the kitchen sink, that the complaint itself was extremely general and claimed pretty much everything that was possible. The response from Cryptozoic Hex points that out and says it's way too fuzzy. You haven't really pleaded things very well. You didn't point out which copyrights, which trademarks, uh, what exactly is infringing. You just say everything is infringing. And they want a new complaint or for the lawsuit to be thrown out. Second thing they do is they point out that the patent is expired. The patent was valid at the time of filing the lawsuit, but the patent between now and then has expired. It expired in June. So it's pretty silly to ask for an injunction indefinitely at this point because the patent no longer has the power to continue to be in force. They may be able to get damages for the time period in which they were possibly infringing before the patent expired, but we will not see that long-term injunction as one of the outcomes of this lawsuit. Now we need to point out that without the patent this does limit us really to trademark and copyright going forward and with trademark we're really looking at the functional aspects versus the look and feel. Functional is covered in patent and you cannot trademark the functional aspects. So with regards to the trademark claims, they're going to have to narrow and point out which pieces of the trade dress or the appearance are being copied directly and that those are non-functional aspects. The same thing is true in copyright. Copyright can cover story and ideas, especially pieces of artwork, but it cannot cover the functional aspects. That's the exclusive domain of patents. Now, Wizards has a very broad copyright claim in their original lawsuit. They talk about the idea, which it's silly to me if the idea of two wizards dueling is enough to get copyright protection over a game. What Cryptozoic has really pointed out here is that this is more an attempt to control the market with regards to card games and that the functional aspects are not covered by copyright. The other thing that's really important about this is that Cryptozoic and Hex have come out fighting. They have hired a international patent experienced, IP experienced law firm to defend themselves in this lawsuit. They're not just going to roll over. Now, does that mean we won't see a settlement? No, that doesn't, because lawyer fees are up for battle at this point. 
the lawyer fees in a lawsuit like this could easily be over one million dollars. So each side, while progressing down this path, has to decide, would it be better just to come to a settlement, pay out some amount of cash, and move on instead of risk losing a huge amount of money in lawyers' fees. If you're interested in looking at the pleadings yourself, definitely check them out over at rpxcorp.com. That's where I was able to find all of the proceedings. Thanks, this has been Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech. I will continue to update you as this lawsuit moves forward. Thank you to all the patrons out there who support the channel. I love being able to put this stuff together.